Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Awesome. So I'm Jam, and I'm really thrilled that <laughs> Beck and Bo are, are happy to be here, and, and, and I am too. So we've just been a couple of days in Berlin at this cool, fun thing called Symphony Live that uh, Sensio Labs puts on. Sensio Labs is the company that supports the Symphony framework and the Twig theming layer and a bunch of really great open source projects. What's your overall take? On, on this idea of a company-backed open source project versus um, something like we have in Drupal land, which is, which is kind of free and wild, anybody does it. We, we call it community open source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's nice because you end up with uh, people who are committed to providing it. It's a small community of people who are, you know, they put money into supporting the ecosystem that they're building. So I think it is a nice thing. And I don't really see that all that often. So it is it is definitely a unique thing. And it's interesting to see what they've done with the community and have still been able to build a big ecosystem around it, even though it's you know funded by a company. Yeah, and the, the Symphony community feels to me like a like a real community. Mm -hmm. um, and the software has certainly been very, very broadly adopted. So they're they're doing a bunch of things right, mm -hmm. I guess. I'm always uncomfortable with dual licensing, mm -hmm. and there are some open source projects that are really hard to contribute to, but um, they seem to really walk that line really well. And as a commercial entity, as the um, with Fabien Potencier pretty much as the sole committer, um, they also have this really strong position that we don't have in Drupal where they say, this release is going out now, we're not doing that, we're doing this other thing, and, and we have incredibly intricately decorated beautiful bike sheds right <laughs> but then we have um, situations like the Drupal 8 release cycle that's been so long so I you know yeah I guess you win some you lose some right yep yeah it's it's definitely nice to have someone who has like the final say and this is what's going to happen and this is not what's going to happen and you know it can, can isolate people sometimes if they, if they don't agree with those things but it does make sure that things keep moving along you know for better or for worse um, like I, I don't remember what when was Drupal 8 supposed to be released absolutely definitely by the end of 2013 <laughs> I think that's when I first started paying attention to Drupal 8, and uh, I thought it was just around the corner. Right, and absolutely, uh, and in real time, of course, this is October 2015 that we're talking. Mm -hmm. Drupal 8 RC1 is just over a week old now, and we're incredibly excited about it, and it's, it's, have you been following? You've been following the release cycle for a couple I, years. I've been, I've, I've, been, I've been following it from a distance, because I interact with Larry quite a bit. Right. So I, 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 I see that it's not done yet. Uh, but I think, they, so the RC is out now, yes. and I did remember seeing someone like a week ago saying that all of the critical issues had been resolved for Drupal 8, so I figured the actual release is going to be pretty soon. Yeah, so so criticals went to zero mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago, and then nothing happened, <laughs> and a guy called Klaus Purer from Austria tweeted, we are currently Volkswagening our criticals in Drupal 8. <laughs> <laughs> which was topical and, and funny. And yes. then yeah. about a week later, somehow there was this, Angie said, Angie Byron said something like, the criticals are back to zero. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got our C1. And, and the, the idea is um, peop, a, a lot more people should be testing and using it now because we've committed to an upgrade path and mm -hmm. a whole bunch of, you know, you can actually bet on this uh, mm -hmm. just about now. So if it stays, we're assuming that there'll be an RC2, probably in another week or two, and then we're really, really hoping to get it out the door. Drupal 8 um, has had complete and total test coverage through its entire uh, development cycle. So even through betas, it's a, the stablest thing we've ever had in that state. So we're, we're hopeful and we're excited cool. about it. It's exciting. What do you do in your day job? Oh, boy. My day job is very fluid at the moment. Okay. Uh, my day job for the last month has probably been conferencing. 
and uh, uh, I've just started working with a startup in the UK. So uh, my day job there has been uh, helping the team uh, start building our product. So we started, I think, back in July. Uh, July 1st, we started kicking off the, the development cycle for that. So that's my day job right now. So I've been working with a, a, a very small team. I think it's just three of us total programming right now uh, to build a new startup that we're hoping to launch in. I think our MVP is out in December sometime. So. Okay, so, Beck, what is your first open source software memory? <laughs> well, I'd say the, um, the first time I remember actually paying attention to what Bo did, um, we, were, we were living in North Dakota at the time, mm -hmm. and um, we were actually training for a half marathon. So we were going on these long runs on the weekend, and pretty much for like hours on end, he would tell me about the drama going on in the thing at the moment. Yes. And I remember trying to ask him, well, what does that stand for? What does that mean? What are these Framework are these interoperability. Yes. And so I think that was the first yeah. introduction I really had to that like. That's talking actually, about what he was doing. That's what actually was in his life. Re really, really familiar. Um, Robert Douglas, who's who's a fairly prominent Drupalist. Um, his wife is a musician, and but she's listened to a decade of stand-up calls and you know uh, contribution stuff, and mm -hmm. she's absorbed all the vocabulary, and then throws together incredibly funny sentences that <laughs> almost make sense. <laughs> But she's just using the words right. either, you know, to be funny or to like uh -huh. purposefully um, be distracting, and it's it's fantastic. So yeah. so that's a very familiar that's a very familiar story to me. Yeah. What do you actually do? Because you're not a developer. I'm not a developer. Um, my background was in art and architecture, actually. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a while, and I did um, 3D computer modeling back when I met Bo. And then we move around a lot, so. Um, we ran a gallery together for a while. Cool. Um, so now I'm mostly home with Luke during the day and working on art in my okay. free time. So would you say you're an artist? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. 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 And so you went on these long runs, mm -hmm. absorbed. Um, so oh, a lot of outsiders, less non-technical people, they think that what we do is yeah. like code and numbers and science and math and right. like to Mr. Spock kind of logic right. and 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 what did you discover like talking with him about it that was how much of a percentage of what you talked about we didn't talk about anything technical because I didn't understand any of that uh -huh. so it was more about kind of the people really yeah I think it was a little bit about politics. The drama, hear, yeah. Yeah, right. to hear a little bit about that and high level what the different projects were and what they did, but not. When necessarily. was this? Um, this was back in 2013, yeah. I think. So that was back in the the pre PSR four era. Okay. Like, so when we were working on PSR four, it was really heavy right around then. And 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 that's also um, from my perspective when. Uh, that's like a the big turning point in PHP when we went from being a Zen developer and a Symfony developer and a Drupal developer and a PHP BB developer and a mm -hmm. fill-in-the-blank developer to, to starting to form this identity that we are PHP developers now, right? And um, uh, this is my claim only, but uh, or, or my community's claim only, but you know now, fast forward um, several years, mm -hmm. uh, you have Drupal 8 emerging as this first meta product, like the first real result of the of the P PSR and the, the framework interoperability work, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's it's the child of all of that. So, yeah. so cool. So you've been right in the middle of all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and are you formally a part of PHP Fig? Um, I was until maybe a month ago. Uh, my project that I started, Sculpin, it's a static site generator that's actually uh, apparently really popular with Drupal people. Uh, Drupal 8 people wanting to learn Twig have been coming to Sculpin to give it a try. Um, that project is a FIG member, it is one of the FIG members, and up until a month ago I was the representative of Sculpin to FIG. 
um, uh, but that has since been switched over to Chris Tankersley. He's now the FIG representative for Sculpin. My personal site is currently on Jekyll um, because it's geeky and fun and because you have to do something outside of your own project every now and then. Yep. Why should I be using Sculpin instead? Uh, you should be using Sculpin instead because it's a PHP project. And in theory, it's something that you could hack more if you need to. Um, I used Jekyll for quite a bit of time before I, I started writing my own project. And it was right around the time that I started learning about Composer and components and bringing everything together. So it, it was a good excuse for me to write something new. Um, and I also like Twig a little better than Liquid. So if, if you like Twig and you are more familiar with Twig and possibly have tried Liquid and found you didn't like it as much as Twig, then you might want to try Sculpin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and it's a fish. And it's a fish, yes. And it's a fish. It's a fish? Sculpin <laughs> is a fish. That is why the logo for Sculpin is a little fish. What what kind of fish? Don't say a Sculpin fish. Um, <laughs> it's a... Well, actually, she... I, I know about Sculpin because she volunteered at the aquarium in Seattle. Uh -huh. uh, she was one of the interpreters in the touch tank area. So I learned about Sculpin from there. So she, found the little Sculpins. Yeah. So, so okay. we got invited to a uh, aquarium night where all of the uh, volunteers and some of the more prominent members were invited to have a night. And I answered that as, as one of the questions. It was like, what, what's your favorite fish? So I, I raised my hand and said Sculpin. So I won like a t-shirt or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so that's great. So um, part of the reason I use Jekyll is, is because it's, you know, popular and easy and, and geeky. Um, it's also partly because of Larry's challenge from last year or the year before, which was, you know, go and install somebody else's project yep. and figure it out. Um, but I really love Twig in the abstract, and I've really followed it um, closely because it we worked very, very hard to integrate it into Drupal. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the syntax and the security of it. I mean, when you're talking about database proper CMS stuff. Mm -hmm. So so actually using Sculpin is now my idea to go and use Twig and get my hands dirty in it. So cool. So yeah. challenge accepted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so wait a minute. I think there's a tie-in here. Um, did you do the logo for Sculpin? Yes. And, and you've used all of these... Uh, uh, runs and times talking about all these open source concepts and names, right? And and that inspired you um, not to create your own technical project, but to create uh, s something else around right. open source. Well, it's kind of you guys are talking now, and you keep saying Twig, and I have no idea what that means. And and, and my, I'm just sitting here listening, and what I'm thinking is. There's a stick, you know, somebody <laughs> picked up a stick off the ground, and that's actually Twig was the first one that I thought of, and. I was listening to his podcast, and he and Dave just keep throwing these words about. I'm like, what are they talking about? I don't know. It's just Twig. And I kind of like that woman you were talking about. I can throw out these terms and these names and pull requests mm -hmm. and, you know, <laughs> Jekyll and all these funny names. And um, I called him up that day, and I said, I just had an idea. I should do paintings based on the names of these projects and my interpretation, since I don't really have any clue what it's about. And I think that made it kind of more fun. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Are there any that I did that actually you've, were a you've representation had, of yeah, you've had a scrutinizer? A scrutinizer. You've because had, he's looking at a little bug. Right. Yeah. Well, my, my favorite so far yeah. is push. And uh, pull, pull request. request. Uh, oh, okay. Well, of course. Yeah. No. <laughs> Which actually makes it funnier. <laughs> yeah. So pull request is your little red wagon. Yeah. Yeah. With a very sad looking turtle right. in it, right. like this. <laughs> And there's nobody to pull yeah, the, the wagon. It's, so it's a pull request. Right, right. It's really, really beautiful and moving. And I think it's so so neat. Um, when I started in, uh, well, Drupal's my home base, my first project. Um, and back in those days, the community was only developers. And there was only really room for developers. And one of the things that I think is great about open source in general is that things have matured so much and we're, we we have created whole ecosystems and we need a lot more people to help us. We need designers and we need um, lawyers and we need marketing people. and, and, and um, But it was really, really super technical um, in back in those days. And, and I, I just, I couldn't have, uh, I couldn't have imagined art, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. coming out of that uh, uh, back in the day. So, so what are some of the other pictures you've done? Um, fig. Fig. And twig. Twig. Stack. Stack. Octopress. Aha. Uh -huh. Lumen. Now, does 
Oh, and Nate. So, so um, hopefully I'll be able to get some some you know low res sample images sure, sure. to put into the yeah. into the post for this. Um, and do you sell do you sell prints of these? I do sell prints of them on my website. Cool. Okay. And I will give you that. <laughs> Shameless plug. Right. Right. <laughs> Ninjagirl.com. Ninjagirl.com. Yeah. Or you can look up OSS art too. OSS art. Mm -hmm. So, but um. Uh, there's a there's a, a subreddit called Shower Thoughts, and I was asking <laughs> myself this morning in the hotel uh, under the shower, I was like, well, it's open source art, but I bet she's not open sourcing them, right? I mean, because you know, um, you guys donated a couple to, sure. to the yeah. to the to the auction yeah. thing here, yeah. and yeah. Um, but they're not like Creative Commons license or, or something, are they? No, and actually, that's something that. I, I'm just going to yeah. jump no, in yeah, here. Go ahead. Uh, that's something that we have been asked before. Um, I think one of the projects wasn't, someone was like, well, that's not really open source. Uh, yeah. which I can't remember which one it was. Maybe Fig. Like, Fig's not open source. But the, the idea isn't necessarily that it's open source art okay. as open source community related inspired. and inspired yeah. art. So you'll end up with things like Twig and Fig together where you know, Fig itself isn't an act, a project or anything. Right. right. So it's stuff. Um, but it sounds like something else. So <laughs> yeah. Well, and even like Scrutinizer is actually a, a service. It's a right. software as a service that that is there, but it's used by open source communities. Yeah. So pr pretty much anything within the the lingo of the. Oh PHP wait. So is it anything that you're talking about at a given time ends up penetrating your brain? Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So I had a whiteboard with a list of uh, funny words or terms, right. and mm -hmm. I would ask you. I would like. I would like you to. I would like to. I would. Do you take requests? Well, see. No. Okay. I get art and inspiration. No, well, but. but I have actually out of this, I've had a lot of um, commissions. <gasps> cool. So people have contacted me because I think it seems like this is. Um, people have responded positively because you know. So they're cute Computer and they're beautiful nerds. and they're funny, <laughs> and right? And they're like, yeah. art, wait, these two can go together. Yeah, totally. And people have wanted either a representation of their project or there were things like mm -hmm. um, Laracon. Yeah, Laracon US, mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Outwell. So, so logo, logos, look and feel, yeah, banner yeah. things? Uh, yeah, their okay. company or their project. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I was just thinking that um, um, in case they're not on your whiteboard, um, <laughs> Cascade might be fun. Um, gulp and Guzzle, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they're already. Yeah. I hope they're already there. Um, what else would be? What what's um, what funny words do we use? There's a lot of them, and it's it's oh, yeah. the the funny thing is that we don't always think that they're different. <laughs> right. But someone outside is listening to conversations. When I try not to be too influenced by yeah. him, because if I find out what it actually means, then it's a little more yeah. difficult you know, I'd rather to... just hear the word do my representation right. rather than, oh yeah, this is what it's used for, or mm. you know, this is where it came from. Like the fiction authors who never read fiction because they don't want their creativity yeah, to be exactly. polluted. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so it's even more fun if you have no idea what it right, is. Right, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so things like Drupal are a little difficult because Drupal has a logo, and I mean, she could probably come up with something for Drupal. And actually, she's had a bunch of requests for so do something for Drupal. Uh huh. Um, and, the, and the little Drupal guy did show up in one of the um, commission pieces. Commissions for a company that used mainly Drupal, and so he showed up in there, you know, in this painting. But okay. I, yeah. I, yeah. But All as right. far as Drupal itself being a project, it would be. I don't know. She she hasn't been inspired by that name necessarily. Right. I mean, so. and our community has produced literally thousands, if not tens of thousands, of pieces of fan art based around the based around the DrupalCon. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. Do you know Do you know why it's a drop? So uh, Drupal means little drop, droplet, droplet in Flemish. Mm. And Dries, the project founder, is is uh, is Flemish. In two thousand or two thousand and one. When he wanted to register the domain name, when he was going to open source what became Drupal, mm -hmm. he wanted to register dorp.org, which means village, because he was it was community building mm -hmm. software already. Mm -hmm. That's his. That's our first iteration, and so dorp.org was going to be village in in Flemish, um, and he mistyped it uh, in the domain registration process, and drop.org was free, which mm -hmm. was crazy because even you know back in two thousand one, a four letter English word was yeah. still free. 
Yeah. So he got drop.org, and from there somehow he he backported that, he back translated that into it became d- Droplet, mm-hmm. right? And Drupal.org, and that all mm. happened. Yeah, that's fine. So that's why a lot of Drupal companies to this day are called things like. Aquia, mm-hmm. or there's all these water references, mm-hmm. um, you know, from the drop to the wave or to the ocean or something. That was another one. Then you have digital ocean, and then you have all these. I mean, there's a lot of that in the collective unconscious of. Mm-hmm. So wait, okay, so um, incredibly wonderful, interesting um, um, technology, software inspired art is to be found at ninjagirl.com. Did I get that right? Yep. Yeah. And no I in girl. Yeah. Oh, ninja girl. girl? Yeah. Just G R L or two R's. G R L. G R L. Okay. N I N J A G R L dot com. Mm-hmm. And Beck does commissions. So yes. I am now. Um, um, I have a, 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 a back <laughs> process running, um, thinking about what I'm going to ask you to do for me because. Yay. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I'm um, really, and um, I'll put a couple of, of, of examples of this stuff in the post with this conversation, and obviously go check that out because it's it's superb and it's amazing. Um, I'd also let's just let's just um, wrap up here and do a little plug. Uh, Bo and I have got a plan to get back online and have a virtual conversation. Um, a little bit more about him and what he does in his background in software, and then talking about um, PHP Fig and talking about the PSR standards that have made all of the things like Drupal 8 and and the broad adoption of the Symfony framework components around the community possible. Um, so, so will you come back on yes. and and do that? And yep. Bo's got um, we're going to talk about Sculpin for sure, and Bo's got a presentation about the PSR 7 standard, which is which is the latest and greatest um, and so we can go into detail about that. Cool. Yeah, sounds Thank great. Thank you so much Thank for you. taking the time to talk with me. It's been really, really, really cool. I'm glad we're going to be able to follow up on this. Yeah. And um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Go Thanks. have fun in Berlin. Yes, we're yeah. going to enjoy it. <laughs> what are the-